Hey, babe. How are hey. you? Hey. I'm so good. Oh my god, I'm so good. I feel like shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> today feel like is that. a weird one. It's a it's a new moon. It's an eclipse, and Mercury's in retrograde, and all kinds of crazy energies just flapping around. Oh no, thanks to all of that. <laughs> I'm not trying to be thinking about that. Um, um, how are you feeling today? Well, grief check. Grief check. Um, I lost another friend yesterday. To death or yeah. in life? Yeah, death. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it too much, but a school friend who I spent a lot of my time with in my 20s because he was best friends with my ex. Um, He was found dead. And... Yeah, I'm just, like, devastated, obviously. I'm sorry. Yeah. What was he, was he, was it drug-related or? You know, I don't know. It was sudden. Yeah, it was sudden. Um, And uh, it's not really for me to talk about his life Mm -hmm. or anything. You know, I actually hadn't spoken to him in about seven years. Um, The last time I saw him, I actually had asked him to leave my house. Mm. But he was somebody that I loved and thought about all the time still and had really hoped that one day we would reconnect. So yesterday was really, really sad. You know, Mm. and I feel sad. I feel off. And last night before I went to bed, I realized that it was a very similar dynamic and that it was Ryan, Max and me. It was Barnaby, Jeremy and me. Mm. And so I think that was probably quite, without me even realizing it subconsciously, a little bit kind of um, extra sensitive. Yeah. Um, And it was interesting. I really uh, was able to cry yesterday. And and I think I will be able to. I cried many times yesterday. And I never have been able to do that before when I've lost somebody that isn't my dad or Ryan and Max. Those are the only people I've ever cried about. And I've lost a lot of people and it's always been frustrating to me. And I think that I truly haven't been able to grieve. And now I can, you know, we lost another one of our really close friends a few years ago in our twenties and I still haven't processed it. Mm -hmm. I don't, it's, it's hard for me to even think of him as being gone. So that's something I need to look at and, Mm -hmm. and process. And I think, I think that having had the experience I had yesterday where I was very struck by it and felt deep grief and sorrow and was able to cry a lot, I'm hoping that means that I'm now able to connect with the pain from the other losses, you know, yeah. that I have stuffed down. Yeah, this really blew you wide open. Yeah. Um, There's no more stuffing anything down. Right. Um, so I think my, you know, as we're saying, our vibes are a little bit weird. Really? Really strange. strange. Really off, but we're not trying to fix anything. We're not trying to be happy or perfect perfect. or anything. No, we don't have to do that. We just are the way we are today. And I'm, I have a lot of the same stuff going through my brain because I have to go to a funeral tomorrow. Because as you know, last in the past week or so, my one of my really good friends' fiance died. I was with her while it was happening, and um, it was much different than when you and I, when I had been there yeah. with you six months ago. I felt really proud of the work that I've been able to do through yeah. being there with you. And I felt much better equipped to understand how to be there for her and, so good. and protect myself in the process. Yeah. So tomorrow's the funeral. And um, I didn't know, you didn't tell me before we pressed record that that had happened yesterday. That's, that's huge for you because the dynamic was similar mm-hmm. and because you are at such a different place with accessing mm-hmm. grief. Yeah. 
I'm sure yeah. this was a totally new experience. Yeah, completely new. And I, uh, my brain was doing that searching thing again yesterday. It was looking for him. And it was searching for all of the memories. And I was thinking about things I hadn't thought about in a long time. What's really fucking weird is I was thinking about him the day before. Really? Yep. I was thinking about him the day before. And my friend Camilla had said to me, you know what's so weird when I called her and told her, she said, I've been thinking about him nonstop the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. Another friend said to me the night before we were talking about him at dinner, haven't spoken to him in years. You know, I just send all my love to his yeah. family and his wife and his mother and siblings, father, you know, everyone that I know. I know what they're... How old was he? Going through and what they're in for, you know. Yeah. He was my age, 32. Yeah, this man on my side is 30. Too young. Too young. What are these guys doing? Oh, God. Who Anyways, knows? Who I'm knows? My teapot. So anyway, anyway, there's that. There's that super fun. That's our grief life. check for today. Grief check. Um, it is Pride Month. Happy Pride <laughs> Month to all the gay queens and kings out there. I love you so much. Happy Pride Month, brothers Obviously. and sisters. <laughs> Obviously, I was born in June, Pride Month. Yes, it's almost your birthday. You summer baby pride. I'm just a little gay baby. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in the dead of winter in December. Nobody, nobody's the witch celebrating hours. on that the day. The witching hours. <laughs> the days are like four hours long. What else is that? Welcome to the world, Lily, but Diana. Welcome to the world, little princess. Is, is she, she a princess? princess? I don't know. <laughs> Lily, but Diana Mountbatten Windsor. Mountbatten. Yeah, that's his last name. Harry's last name is Mountbatten Windsor. Is it Montbatten? I mean, it might have been at some point. What can we tell you about this? Lilybet was born on Friday, June the 4th at 11.40 a.m. Little Gemini. S- I know, she's a Gemini queen. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Watch out, royal family. Problems. You are in for trouble. I cannot wait for her to be a teenager. Mm. <laughs> she could have been a bougie bitch and gone to Cedar sinai She could have come to L.A. and done it like loads of people do. Yeah. But she went to the local hospital in Santa Barbara, which is a... Shout out to Cottage Hospital. We great love you. fucking hospital. Yes, it is. And I just love that, that they decided to do it there that's amazing really rock the fuck on so yeah. little baby great grandma is queen lizzie grandpa is prince charles and thomas markle whom we do not mention doria i don't know markle. any of these people well, she's, doria is megan's mother thomas oh okay is, do thomas we... is her shiesty father i see do is her mother her mom's a okay with us. Her mom seems lovely. Because yeah. you know, I think we're gonna be having some mum chat today. Yeah. Luckily, the mums of Harry and Meghan, golden, iconic, brilliant women. Um. So I just wanted to just make those announcements. Very exciting at the top of the episode this week. Um. What else? That's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's <laughs> all you got. Goodbye. <laughs> that's all you have we're gonna well, end it there shit I don't have any announcements no okay so <laughs> there was some controversy over Lily Butt's name what do you feel about that what was the controversy that people were like it's so disrespectful because Lily Butt is the nickname of Queen Elizabeth of Elizabeth right yeah. no I think that's loving I think it's adorable and it is royal tradition to use a name all of the other there's only like one family in the royal family that haven't done that and i think it's princess anne's daughter Mm. zara is that her name i don't know she didn't name her kids royal names everyone else has got one so i love this i think this is a modern take on an ancient tradition i think it's it's very loving to the grandmother and you know i'm all i know is what i've seen on the ground but he uh he calls she's called lilibet yeah by her loved ones yeah i think it's beautiful and i think all the haters need to suck a big fat one they just want (laughs) something to complain about they just want to hate them it's another just relax i hope you guys get well soon to all the haters (laughs) live and let live nigel (laughs) Um, okay, so yes. Live and let moms. Lilybet live. <laughs> oh my god, I love that. <laughs> live and let Lilybet live. 
<laughs> T-shirt. Merch uh, idea. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, we have merch coming. <gasps> Oh my god. No, I love it. Merch is coming. Should I have kept it secret? No, I've been working off my little patoots on it. And we I saw cannot... the first designs today. Cannot they're wait. They're so cute. They're so cute. I can't wait to share it with you. I guys. can't say cute with a straight face. That's fine. Uh, oh my god, your face is straight. Your mouth I is better. My mouth healed <laughs> since last week. <laughs> healing, baby. Yes. We're healing, we're healing. We're healing physically, mentally. Emotionally. Emotionally. Can we just talk about, well, you know, I've been dying Uh-oh. to know how your dinner with your mother went. I've been asking you for like five weeks I know. or something. Yes. And you finally went. I finally had my dinner with my mother that Annabelle's been forcing me to have. Because I'm that's still a lot of recap. Doodling on my pad and I don't want High control group situation. Yes. You and your mother lost contact for two years. Yes. And you didn't speak. That's right. And that's huge. Yeah. And you didn't even tell your mum why you lost contact. You weren't ready to share that with her. And at dinner, you did. Yeah. So at the time, I'm forgetting what I've said about this, but at the time, she... And I were not getting along Mm -hmm. and it was getting worse and worse. And I was becoming more and more convinced that I did not want her to have anything to do with my life. I was convinced that she was evil, that she was out to get me, that she was trying to bring me down, sabotage me. As a result of the brainwashing. As a result of some brainwashing that went on. Which is so embarrassing to say. I'm no. gonna, I, yeah, I know. I'm going to keep talking through these things, but... Good. It, say it out loud. It's, it's, it's really... The thing to remember when listening to someone talk about this kind of thing is, I understand that all you want to do is ask why. Why? Why would you believe that? Why this? Why that? Why this? Why that? You really can't. There is no why. It just gets to that point where you are believing... Mm-hmm. A lot of things mm-hmm. that aren't true. Mm-hmm. Am I right in thinking that there was also an element there where the concept of you become what you're around yeah. was really weaponized against Very your, weaponized. you and your friends to to basically make you move people away from you. Yeah, to so isolate yourself. Was um, doing a job that was considered less than exactly. or had made different choices or wasn't X, Y, and Z. Exactly. And you were going to become that. And that's what had been drilled into you and that's what separated you from your mother for those exactly. two years. Right. So I began to distance myself from my whole family mm-hmm. for various reasons wow. that weren't true. Yeah. And my mom asked me to go to dinner with her. And I met her at a restaurant And I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to be there. She said, she sat down. She said, I need you to stay and listen to everything I say. And this was before you fell out? Yes. This was the night that we fell out. Oh, wow. This was like the painful thing that I have been telling Mm. you that I wanted to apologize to her for. Right. And she said, "I, I want you to stay and hear everything I have to say and not leave. And she told me what she thought. And I lost my mind, and I was pounding on the table, as we know I like to do. You love a good table pound. (laughs) I'm waiting for it to evolve into the table flip. Oh, oh, yes. I haven't found a table that I can handle yet. This one... Well, let's not This one's a little... No, don't flip this table. This one's a little heavy. See one in a cat fight in my living room. I'm going to have to start with, like, a bistro (laughs) table outside in the garden. Just keep it light. Maybe a plastic lawn chair. Yeah, start there. (laughs) But so when you say she told you what she thought, what does that mean? She told me that she felt that the situation I was in was dangerous. The group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that she wanted me to leave. And she didn't like how the leader was treating me. Yeah. Mothers know. Treating everyone. And I said to her the most hurtful things that I could think of Mm. because 
part of the brainwashing was if somebody comes at you and tells you what they think about this group, you have to wipe them out. You have to stop them Mm -hmm. at all costs. Yeah. Doesn't matter what you have to say. negative thoughts, okay. Whatever is going to wipe them out, you go for the jugular, (sighs) which I did. And Mm. I didn't even know who was speaking. It was was like a demon was saying these things. And I left her sitting there with a full table of food. And I ran out. Mm. And I was shaking so badly. And I drove straight to the leader's house and told everything that had happened. Mm. And I was told... Good job. You did the right thing. Oh, God. It's so embarrassing to talk about. I mean, I understand that it feels embarrassing to you, but to my, to me and anyone listening, all that people feel about this is um, compassion. Mm. Because I think... We are at a place in society now where people know that it's not like, you know, it's like when people say, oh, your mum's hitting your dad. Why doesn't he just leave? Because it's not how abuse works. As we said Mm. on last week's episode with Marnie, they explicitly tell you hundreds of times, thousands of times. You are nothing without them. And going back to what we were saying about you, you can become what you're around. There is an element of that that is true. Well, you become what you're around and you start to believe those people when they tell you, your mom is bad. Your sister doesn't love you. She's jealous of you. Your mom's a failure. What's she ever done with her life? They're evil. And it's, someone tells you this enough and gives you all these arguments for why it's true and you're in a group setting where everyone is confirming and you're looking to the other people for a signal. Is this, and everyone's sitting there agreeing. Nodding their head, yeah. Of course you're gonna yeah. start to believe it. And I just, I really don't want you to feel embarrassed because as we are realizing on so many levels, Maybe not as for everyone as intense as your situation, but it's really easy to start believing things that somebody tells you in a manipulative or coercive environment. Mm-hmm. And then you it's not easy to leave because you believe it like you believe I'm holding a cup in my hand right now. It's it becomes that your reality. Real. Yeah, it becomes your reality. So I just I, want you to know it's nothing but compassion and, and empathy for your It's nothing to be ashamed of. Thank you. I've learned something about all of this. Anyone who is involved in a high control group or a cult or with a narcissistic abuser, it's because you are willing and wanting to give your power away to anyone who will take it. And is it an exchange for love? It's an exchange for being powerless, which is what you want, because that's the story that you've created about yourself, and you're going to fulfill that prophecy no matter what. But what does that come from? Do we know? It comes from low self-esteem, feeling feeling worthless. When you feel worthless, you don't want anyone to give you any power because you don't believe that you can, that you deserve it, right? that you're capable of it. So you are begging everyone around you to take your power, whether it's men or a group like this. Mm. It makes you susceptible to that coercion. Yeah. Yeah. So that night in the restaurant, I killed my mom as best I could. Figuratively. Yep. And I got up and I left. And we didn't speak for a long time after that. And when we did speak again, we never mentioned what had happened. Mm. I stayed in the group Mm -hmm. for another couple years. Mm -hmm. 
And we've been walking on eggshells with each other ever since. Mm -hmm. I left the group a year ago, as I've said, Mm -hmm. but I still had not come to my mom and addressed what had happened that night. Yeah. Because I wasn't, I still wasn't seeing it really until I started to talk about it on the podcast that I thought I needed to apologize to her. Yeah. So as I realized what had actually happened, which was that I was turning against my mother unnecessarily and it was all based on lies, Mm -hmm. I was so ashamed that I had treated her that way. And I was with her last week. And I didn't say it because we were with people. Mm -hmm. She slept over at my house. And the next morning she came back into the bed. And she said, looked at me and just said, so what'd you talk about on your podcast this week? (laughs) Oh, shit. I hadn't even thought about the fact that she would listen to the podcast and hear that you're going to talk to her about something. She hadn't listened yet. She was asking me. She said, I haven't listened. I need to catch up. And I said, well, actually, we were talking about you. Literally, and I'm so dumb. I, did I always forget that people listen, listen. And then I'll say things to them and they go, yeah, I know. And I go, what? Oh. Wait. Oh, no. I'm panicking. I don't know. It hadn't even occurred to me because I've been saying for weeks, when are you going to have dinner with your mom? When you-? She did not hear any of those. But she has now gone back and listened. I just felt like I was so scared to say it to her (laughs) in the morning. And she just looked at me and, like, asked me the direct question. She fucking knew. She did not know. She must have known. Well, I would say that is spirit in life. Yeah. Which, but that's just what I believe. That means Linda's known. Linda's known, yeah. Because she listens every week. Shout out to Linda. Hey, Linda. She's the mother of my (laughs) sisters. Right. And I said, yeah, we were talking about you. And she said, why? And I said, well, (laughs) I need to apologize to you for that night. And she immediately burst out crying. Oh, God. And I was trying to not cry so that I I was just trying not to cry. I wanted to tell her certain things without fucking them up. And she just said, you don't have to apologize. She said... I never stopped believing that you would come back. Oh, God. And I just had to give you the space to to go through what you were going to go through because I didn't want to push you too hard and risk losing you. Yeah. Which so many families have to deal with in these kinds of situations. Mm. And I said, at that time, I couldn't have heard you. And I went straight to Mm. the leader and... I was just lost to myself. And she said, I knew you would come back. I know you. I know your spirit. I know your mind. You don't allow things to go unquestioned. Yeah. I knew that you were so far gone that you just needed time, but I never left. I just kept watching from a distance. It was very emotional. We talked for hours. I mean, I'm crying right now as you're telling me. I told her the severity of everything and how deeply involved I really was and what it really was. And her mouth was totally open. She had no idea that it went that deep. We both cried and shared many things that we'd wanted to say for all this time And she had to go. She had plans with her friends. She canceled all her plans. She said, my daughter, I need to be with my daughter right now. (laughs) She was celebrating. She was so overjoyed that I had returned and come come to my senses and, and come back to myself. And I said, you know what? I said, I've I've never been so ashamed. I've never been so hurt by something as what I said to you that night. Yeah. And she said, I don't even remember what you said because I knew it wasn't you. Oh. And I said, okay, then I'm not going to remind you because it was <laughs> terrible. <laughs> and I said, you know what? I said, let's go to that restaurant tonight and oh. celebrate and we'll get the same table. Oh, and we did. So <laughs> we did. We went back there, 
And we celebrated truth. Yeah. Truth. Truth winning out in the end. Liberté. Liberté. <laughs> and it was very healing for both of us oh. and continues to be. And she is my biggest fan. Oh. She's the one that is most special to me in this world. And anyone who wastes your time thinking that you have all this time to say the things you want or let 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 relationships go on when they're not in harmony just don't do it just say it yeah tell them i'm a really big believer in that so that's my mom update oh how are you with your mom oh Since god we're don't all just about moms today like that. i just gotta recover from that i know so emotional yeah it was oh i'm gonna give you oh. a hug i'm so happy for you thank you Oh, what a relief. Yeah, it was. It was. I mean, when you told me how many weeks ago, three or four weeks ago, that you had lost God, I didn't even know that. So it's just interesting watching you go through this process of like deprogramming yourself and the layers that are peeling back. You know, and I know you said this morning that you've been doing a lot of work on it and and all of that, and it's maybe something you want to take a break from talking about, which I completely, completely respect and understand. Yeah, I just know, want to take just... a break from looking at it so closely. Yeah. I mean, you and I are the kind of people that question everything, and you can only do that so much before you're totally exhausted. No, and you, and here's the thing. I think when you've been through what you've been through, you have to for a while. You have to take breaks. And then you, you go in, yeah. and you've got to just fucking rip big. a couple yeah, layers it. off and then you need to step back yeah and it's kind of what i do with my grief yeah you know because this situation isn't me it doesn't define me no. it's not my life no. it has nothing to do with my life it's something i've i went through that i'm curious about and i want to learn as much as i can from that that's all it has nothing to do with where I am at now, so yeah. it doesn't. The group doesn't, need. but the but the experience has everything to do with it does. the person you are today. Yeah. Because as we've, you know, it's a fucking shitty experience, but here you are, the person that you are as a result of that test. You it, know. Yeah. It was. It was um, just a lesson of 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 really being ready to. Own all my power. And live in the truth. And live in the truth. Wow, powerful stuff. How are you and your mom? Well, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Um, me and my mom are good. It's been weird to be unable to see her since losing Ryan and Max. I don't know if like a lot of people realize that like I haven't seen anyone other than people are here because the borders are closed. Mm -hmm. so I've not seen my mother or any of my other friends. And so that's put, definitely put strain on us, I feel like. I feel like she really wants to support me and be, be around and be in my life, but doesn't know how. And I think that sometimes she gets a bit frustrated that I can't, that I'm not calling her or answering the phone or, you know, or whatever it is. But, and I think that maybe other people could potentially feel that way as well. I know that I seem much better and I am in so many ways, but I am still surviving. Yeah. And that's the truth of it. As good as I seem. And I'm still, I'm able to have fun now and, you know, let the wind go through my hair and, you know, be freer. But I am still at night coming home to my reality, mm -hmm. you know, and that's just no easier to handle at this point. So people call me and I don't answer the phone and it's something I'm really struggling with is that I don't know, I've never understood, I've never been like this in my life before. It's so crazy to desperately want to answer the phone and like physically you can't. Wow, so does that happen to you with your mom? Yeah, haven't seen me with any. I've I've got like a hundred and something missed calls just from like the last two months on my phone because like I, I don't know where to start. So that's really hard, especially with my mom because she really wants to be in my life. But also, I just need 
what's in front of me is what I'm focused on because if I start focusing on other things then I feel like the ship's going down so I just have to be as in the moment as possible and with the people I'm with as possible and I know that sucks for the people I can't be with including Mm. my mother but that's just my reality right now and and I'm sorry that it's that that it is that way I don't want to hurt her and I don't want her to feel pushed out and I don't want anyone to feel that way. But I am trying to survive. So I am, whatever is in front of me, that's where I am. That's who I'm with. That's what I'm doing. And I have to do that. So that's been really tricky. Really, really tricky. Has it caused arguments? <clears throat> no arguments, but it's definitely like some tension. So that's that's interesting and that's been tricky. But historically we have a... Good relationship. Here is my situation with my mom. It was very tricky in my teens and early 20s. Like, I remember as a kid really craving, like, a mumsy mom. Mm. And that's just not who she is. And now I can just understand, like, that's not who she is and that's fine. But I was surrounded by all these mums that were, like, you know. Yeah. Wrote what was for dinner on the chalkboard and, like... All of that shit. And my mom's just cool and independent and free-spirited. And, you know, it's just, like, not her vibe. And I think where I felt the shift and where I was able to get to with my mom... Well, it took my dad dying, really, for me to kind of get scared into fixing things with my mom and making things better... Because I thought, fucking hell, I've only got one parent left. And I want to enjoy this relationship. Mm -hmm. I don't want to waste any time and not have closeness with my one remaining parent. And actually, what's funny is the older she's got, the more mummy ish she's got. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, So my dad died. And after that, and I went into therapy and everything. And that's where I really started to work on my shit with my mom. Because, you know, here's the thing. I think... Poor old moms. They yeah. get the fucking brunt they of They really it. do. And that's the thing. It's no like, matter what, it's it their fault. Yeah. It wasn't good enough. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, you could be the most perfect mother and your kid's still going to fucking hate you for something. Kids like, you are like, too perfect. You, oh, God. And I really, ch- I think about that a lot. Yeah. And, you know, I'm an adult now and I'm so flawed, as we all are. And I think, God, if I had a kid, what oh, are the things that God. they're going to... But also, I just feel like your kids are going to resent you. No matter either what. way. Just do the best At you can. At some point about something. I mean, there are the rare instances where that's not true. And actually, I'm going to pull up the pictures from, sorry, the comments that you guys sent in on the Instagram this week when I asked you how your relationship was with your mothers and whether you had made efforts to get closer if you weren't, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The one that made me laugh... The two Strange. comments that you guys made that made me laugh the most was irreversibly boundaried and monosyllabic. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was so funny. And the other one that I thought was really funny was she always thought we were Lorelai and Rory, but actually we were Emily and Lorelai. Oh, God. I don't get that one. Have you seen Gilmore Girls? No. Okay. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> What a shock that you haven't seen it. But you and everyone else gets it, so that's good. We're on track. A lot of people said that they got closer as they were older, Mm -hmm. which I think is really, really common. And then when I said in the questions on Instagram, how did you try to improve your relationship or how did you improve your relationship? Some really interesting things came up. Some people said they literally just moved across the country and it made their relationship better distance. I mean, yeah, sometimes it does. It, it, it definitely improved my relationship with my mum. And I'll tell you why I think it did. Is because the distance means that all you've got is your communication. Right. So if your communication isn't good, then everything's wonky donkey. So it kind of has to make you a master of communication with this person 
that maybe in the busyness of life and around the kitchen table and whatever, whatever, you can fall into those habits of, you know, just shitty communication and looks and busy and, you know, all of the culture of life. So I think that probably might have something to do with it. It's not yeah, just you like have to behave stuff. yourself when you're <laughs> when yeah, you're communicating because, because that's all you get is that phone call. That's all you get is that one phone call, and you both have to plan for it and yeah. make it a priority, or else it won't happen. Yeah, interesting. And then yeah, empathizing with her childhood and learning her love languages. Learning each other's love languages. If anyone doesn't know what that means, there's a book. Tell us, self-help guru. On the love languages written by... I actually think I have it. You do? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting up. Look at that. The book is right there. Annabelle had it. Gary Chapman. Number one New York Times bestseller. Five love languages. The secret to love that lasts. This book is very helpful for understanding yourself and everyone around you. Not only your lovers, but your family members and your friends. So if you want to learn more about your parents and how to treat them. Read this fucking book. What are you looking at? Tell us what the five languages are. So the five languages of love are words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, And physical touch. What are your love languages, do you think? I would say, so this book says that we each possess all of those in a different order. So, Oh, it's not just one. It's like like a thing of like, what's the priority? Right. Okay. And we each respond to love and give love differently. So for me, I would say words of affirmation is probably number one for me. If you gas me up. I'm great. (laughs) Acts of service is probably number two for me. Uh, Receiving gifts. Yeah. Receiving gifts would be three. Quality time would be four. And physical touch is honestly last for me, which is tough for Will because he's physical touch is very important to him. So like sometimes if he's touching my arm or something. Yeah. Or you, you, like you, a, you might feel it with me. Sometimes yeah, you go you to hug like a, me and I almost have to remind myself, oh, I need to respond. No, you don't. No, I do in my mind though. Because oh, okay. I'll just sit I mean, there. I will, but not to me. I'll just sit there and it feels nice, but it doesn't like... It doesn't make you... Oh, some people just fall melt. into a puddle. Yeah, yeah. What are yours? What what um, order are you in? Um, God, okay. Physical touch... Acts of service, words of affirmation, quality time receiving gifts Mm. would be mine for sure. Look at Gary. What a fucking cute little man. He's cute. And he does talks about this book with his wife, I believe. They do a a lot of this work together. I bet she's the happiest wife in the world. (laughs) I would say so. So that's a good tool to use in dealing with your relationship with your parents. I thought that our listener feedback to these questions that you asked were really split down the middle. I felt a lot of people were dealing with some narcissistic parents. Yeah, I I think it's really common. And I think it's a lot more common than people think. It really is. Um, Because narcissism can jump out in a lot of different ways. Oh, yeah. I think people have a very specific view of narcissism like it's like oh you think you want to look sexy all the time put gel in your hair you're staring in the mirror all the time honky guy in the mirror or something like no that's not what it is no it's not what it is it's pretty insidious honestly narcissism um and then other people were i don't know i didn't really see the good ones i just saw a lot of people having trouble connecting with their parents and a lot of it was working on the communication yeah which was what we were just saying boundaries removing yourself when you're feeling a little when you're reaching that peak arousal maybe you're about to have a fight maybe something maybe you're feeling that vibes coming along yes excuse yourself from the conversation the room exactly you don't have to be like oh i'm leaving but you know it's good that was a big one i learned was when somebody's going fucking ape shit or somebody's going off or somebody's saying something guess what that's got nothing to do with me and i don't have to sit here and listen to it 
You love excusing yourself. Oh, it's your favorite. I'll excuse myself. I'll excuse you. I'll excuse. Everybody. Yeah. I mean, these pe- Yeah. Somebody said mostly my mom has never tried to understand me or where I'm coming from. I've tried to tell her that, but nothing changes. <sighs> Every few years we get into some silly fight and we don't talk for a few months. And then I wish her a happy birthday and we're fine. Well, that is a roller coaster yeah, of narcissistic that's yeah, that's really tendencies. Yeah. And that is really confusing when it's your parent, when it's any family member. Yeah. Because you think, God, I don't want to give up on this yeah, person. I want it's to. It's really hard, yeah. And then, but then you you have to, to protect yourself. But then they people, reach out and you go right back. People who don't give up on their parents, that's the thing. They're like, oh, it's my parent, whatever, whatever, you know. And I get it. It's not, I will, I'll cut you right out. You know, and I, that goes for anyone. I, family, friends, anyone. I don't care for family. I can love you. You don't get to treat me that way. I can love you from a distance. I'll always love you. But I will cut you out if you are making me ill or we are bad for each other mm-hmm. or whatever it is or, you know, things aren't getting better or this. But, you know, if, we, if it's not a two-way street it a try, and if you are not being respected and there's no effort on the other side, somebody said... Brutal honesty took us back to the bones and cleared out a lot of shit. Not for everyone. Mm. I kind of love that. That's something I need to be better at. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With my mom specifically. <laughs> I'm not telling you. <laughs> no, with my mom specifically. Yeah. Um, I find that stuff really hard with with her because she's so sweet. It's like I feel like I'm kicking a puppy. It's really hard, and it stops me sometimes from being honest yeah brutal honesty is tough because especially if you're the only one in the family saying it because then the family member will go to other family members to get support and sympathy and all of a sudden you've got three people teaming up against oh, you yeah going, why are you treating so why and so that way to- and you go Woo! am i the only one that's willing to say this out loud because everyone else seems to mm. just not to not want to rock the boat and that can be really really difficult within a family that is a real problem in my family. Yeah. A real problem. Wow. It, my family, problem? everyone talks behind each other's backs yeah. about each other, but no one will say it to their face. <laughs> so everyone knows everything that's going on in each other's lives, but there's a lot of rules like, don't tell so-and-so that this happened. Ugh, God, don't tell exhausting. so-and-so that this happened. So you end up holding all these secrets for people. <gasps> you know, I found it really interesting last week with Marnie when she said that she felt she couldn't completely open up about her experience because she wanted to protect her mum and family. And I don't know why I didn't say anything at the time. I just, I was so listening to her and and wanted to give her the respect and space to her story. But I had so many thoughts about things that she was saying. and, And that specifically was really hard for me to get my head around because I have been taught in therapy and through other you know, things I've done to help myself and heal myself that, as you always say, it's none of my business. I say this, I talk a big talk, but there is one particular issue in my family where I do protect my mom Mm. and at my own cost. Yeah. And it has been at my own cost since the event and ever since. And I will not be free of it until she dies because I won't go against her on it. Wow. So I get it in the one in the one hand I do get it, but in the other hand I found that really hard because I thought to myself, and here now I'm saying it out loud. I can see it's totally me fucking reflecting on my own shit. Actually, <laughs> nothing to do with money. Which is why do I have to suffer to protect you? You didn't fucking protect me. Where's the protecting me? So now I have to protect, and that's where my Mm, that's the hot coal in me when it comes to family. i got to protect all of you. Who's protecting you? Mm. And I can't, right. I, I, I don't want to go into it because it's just like, it's, I'm just not ready for the backlash of it and from, from yeah, the family. Yeah, that's a big, and that's it, a big comment and a big discussion. And I'm trying to think of something to say, but my mind is whirling through a lot of personal it's things so, yeah. that I want to make sense of before I comment on what you're saying because it is common in every family but why why is that normalized 
family dynamics are so fascinating. And my therapist would kill me for keeping this thing going. It's not up for discussion, and it's so unlike me. But I mean, fair enough. Why do you have to? Why do you have to? Because it's my experience. I experienced something that changed me forever, and I'm not allowed to talk about it. I wasn't then, and I'm not now. And it was something we went through as a family. And we never talk about it, and we're not allowed to talk about it. So you have nowhere to... And I'm a sharer. I share, and that's how I process. It is asked that we do not even talk about it with friends. Well, I'm going to make you tell me after we press Well, I'll tell you. (laughs) And I, I honestly hope to come to a place in my life where I can go... You know what, guys? I'm really sorry that this makes you uncomfortable, but this is my experience. I'm not going to speak for any of mm-hmm. you about what we all went through, but I'm going to speak for me about yeah. it. That's where I want to get. But I have to be willing mm-hmm. for the backlash. Mm-hmm. What is that sound now? There's so many sounds Guys, outside. there's a lot of sounds in this episode. But I'm totally engrossed in what you're saying because I would... Because I've gotten to that place too where I am so sick of protecting people's secrets. Don't tell... Don't tell this. Don't tell that. I have such a big mouth that I just say <laughs> things because I forget that I'm supposed <laughs> to be protecting all these secrets. And also when it gets to a point, I'm sure. I mean, there is... I, we don't have a bunch of secrets in the family. We just have this one thing. But if there's millions of secrets... How do you even remember what's a secret Can't and who knows straight. what? And you've got a big family that you've got a bit over here, a bit over there. You've got a lot of siblings. You've got I a lot of like different branches, five different, different family. family branches. Exactly. You know, that's been very liberating, this project that I'm doing, which Your is book. the book I've written yeah. and the television show that's based on the book. That's really been the most satisfying thing about it because I am outing all my family's secrets. Oh. The for, tea for the last hot. for the last three generations, there have been secrets down to the point that I interviewed my grandmother about her father. I think I mentioned yeah, you this said, before. and she took it to her dad. She Having absolutely wouldn't killed himself by hanging himself in the barn. Excuse me, anybody who doesn't like that. My family's been through that multiple times with suicides. My grandmother, my great grandfather, and. She said to me, don't tell anyone that he did that. And I said, what? Grandma, he did that in 1940. (laughs) He was already 60 years old when he did it. Oh, wow. That was... (laughs) No one is alive right now that remembers when he did that. And she was just, don't... No. I have... No. Somebody might be alive still or children of somebody that knows... Because when he did that, the coroner lied and said that it had been a heart attack instead of a hanging. Because suicide was considered to be so shameful. Yes, and the coroner was close with the family and corroborated their story that it had been a heart attack. I've been reading this book called Suicide in the Soul, and it's a, it's from like a therapist, an analytical standpoint, where it talks about all of the complications around suicide, all of the moral things, implications, all of the... The, the resistance in us and where it comes from in accepting suicide as a normal part of life, religious, societal, mm-hmm. familial, all of those things, and how it affects how we respond I'd to like suicide. I'd like to read that. Yeah, it's Even really as, interesting. You know, we said earlier we always forget that people are actually listening to this thing and they will they know exactly what we've been talking about for the last six months. Yeah. Uh, me saying that my, you know, just mentioning a couple family members, I know there's going to be people in my yeah. family that are listening to this that won't even want that. Yeah. But you know what? Oh, God, sick it's it's my, 1940. It's my experience and I will, I will boldly and proudly always share my experience. The argument in my family is, well, that wasn't your experience. I'm like, bitch, it was my fucking experience. Yes. I was there every goddamn step of the way. Every step of the way. Yeah. So that was my experience. Mm-hmm. There will come a time soon when you will be able to... Guess me see how mad I get. Yeah. And I don't really get mad so much. But that one makes me mad. You know what else makes me mad? Is when I think about my stepmummy. 
Don't even. <laughs> Your face. Get me going. <laughs> my, the woman that my dad married, who is technically my stepmother. Wow. Are you, I'm, I'm staring at you because I'm wondering how far you're going to go here. <laughs> I just, yeah. <laughs> I'm so, it makes me so angry. Like, thankfully that bitch moved back to Florida. She was living in Pasadena for a while. And I swear to God, if I had seen her in the street, I would have got damn curb stomped her right there. And then <laughs> she'd be dead and I'd be in jail. <laughs> That's how I feel. You want to talk about mommy issues? <laughs> she'd be dead. I would have killed her and I'd be in jail. This podcast never would have happened. <laughs> and that would have been that, <laughs> you know, and that would have been the end of the story. Well, <laughs> you and I have a lot of uh, I, shared experiences. <laughs> I'll just say that. We really just, we have so much in common. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, oh. But actually, the reason I thought about her earlier is because, you know, when we were saying, like, oh, why don't people walk away from these abusive situations? Mm. Well, that was the question that everyone had for my dad. Why isn't he walking away? Why isn't he walking away? Why isn't he walking away? From a very abusive I dynamic. I would ask of anyone who poses that question to take a look at yourself and ask yourself, where aren't you walking away? Yeah, bitch. Where the fuck aren't you walking away before you judging everyone else? I don't say that to escape judgment because you can ask me anything you want, but for your own good, look at yourself. <clears throat> and ask that question. No, that's really good. F f scratch me being silly about it. I... Because I guarantee every single person on the planet say, has somewhere yeah, where they have not walked yeah. away. And they don't know why. Yeah, and then when you ask yourself that question, look at the answer. Maybe that will help you understand why people don't w walk away from um, physically abusive marriages or sexually abusive situations or financially abusive or, you know, all of the above. Yeah. Because you can't. Something in you is telling you you can't. In the same way I feel like I can't talk about this thing. Mm -hmm. In the same, you know, it's, there's that little thing in your mind that goes, if you do this. You're going to. Lose everything. Yeah, you're going to lose everything. You're going to fail. And when you've come out the other side of it, like I have. Got a lot more compassion for why people do the things they do. Yeah, you and me both, I think, in the last year, I've always, you know, we joke about empathetic people all the time. Empaths, oh my God. I'm an empath. Oh my God. We, we make a lot of fun, but losing the boys has been a lesson for me in vulnerability and compassion. I never understood the expression. I mean, I understood it, but I was such a deaf, fuck them. Be kind to the people who cross your path because you never know what struggle somebody has going on inside of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. My Lord, is that true? Yeah. Maybe that's our thought for the day. I can definitely use that today. <laughs> <laughs> I am in a cuckoo place. You want to go have a fight in the yard, a fist fight? Where, what am I feeling? No. <laughs> no, I don't. I just want to move on from any old tape mm. or memory mm. that's not here anymore mm. i want to keep it moving i just want to start over yeah <laughs> my healer yesterday i had a session with him and he said this is your new mantra is i'm always only one breath away from beginning again every breath you take into your body is a new moment. It's a chance to start over completely. God, that's beautiful. All that stuff that mattered to me a year ago, a month ago, last week, it's not here right now. Beautiful. Love you. I love you so much. <laughs>